The Sonic Adventure series is a series near and dear to my heart. I spent countless hours raising Chow and aiming for those medals and A-ranks. There was just something special about Adventure running super fast in 3D environments with a giant whale chasing you on a bridge. This made me want more! Speaking of, you may want to see more videos from me, so be sure to subscribe to keep up and drop a like in this video to get it out to more people and help support me. Now, cue in the more I was talking about with Sonic Adventure 2. Just when you think things could get better, they did. The stakes were driven up to an 11. The introduction of Shadow the Hedgehog, Sonic's darker and edgier new rival created a lasting impression and offered surprising depth for a character in the Sonicverse we hadn't really seen before. Shadow was introduced as a villain, but we only come to find out his traumatic past and ultimately he sacrifices himself to save the world in the end. But you can't keep a good hedgehog down. Shadow reemerges in Sonic Heroes, only aware of his name and his best pal in the world, Maria's tragic death. Right off the heels of his re-emergence in Sonic Heroes due to his popularity as a character and series director Takashi Iizuka stating he wanted to do more with the character. Shadow the Hedgehog took his turn front and center being the subject of his own game. And thus, Shadow the Hedgehog was greenlit. Takashi wanted to take this particular game in a different direction however. He wanted it to be a more adult, catered game and darker in tone, exploring the mystery of Shadow's creation and such, expanding the Sonic series to an older demographic, which at the time was interested in games like Halo, Half-Life, Metal Gear Solid, insert other random dark gritty shooter like game here, the world didn't know what it was about to get. But when it did, the reviews came in, and it was pretty mixed. It appears that the GameCube version which I played had average reviews while the PS2 and Xbox versions had less favorable results. I was then curious if my own nostalgia bias toward the release of this game being a Sonic fan was blinding me. Was this game actually good or was it stinky poo poo garbage? So I went back. Upon replaying it, there's one critical thing I have to say right now. I did have fun. I couldn't help but feel there are things this game does really well. And don't get me wrong, there are things it doesn't, but we'll get into that. So wanting to see if anyone else felt the same, I went between Twitter, YouTube, and Reddit to ask what people like and dislike. And oh boy, did people have a lot to say. I got a massive list of flaws and issues, but what's interesting is despite that, a lot of people said the same thing I did. They still had fun with this game. Do the flaws of this game outweigh the fun to be had? I don't think so. My name is Jiggy Lookback, and I'm a Shadow the Edgehog Defender. I mean Hedgehog. Let's first address what was commonly stated to be negatives for this game. The game controls. Ah, uh, that sounds pretty harsh at first, but just hear me out. The Sonic series is no stranger to sloppy controls. Even in Adventure 1 and 2, the controls could be considered sloppy. Usually the controls are something you can adjust to and account for so you know, hey, when I come off the ramp, it's gonna hurdle me forward and I need to make a left. This is basically trial and error, but this way you can keep improving and improving, which was a big draw for me in Adventure and Adventure 2. It made me feel like I could go faster if I just improved my skills. Shadow the Hedgehog generally controls okay when you're talking a normal 3D platformer pace. The controls get a little sloppy when you're running ahead at high speeds. Say you run up a loop off dash pads and come out of the loop. You'll be moving so fast you'll probably run into an enemy or a wall and hit a dead stop. Or heaven forbid, a cliff. There's also not much turning at those speeds in general, so be prepared to just blindly charge forward. And if you need to stop, Shadow does sort of a slide, which can also get you into trouble. But even apart from moving at high speeds, on one stage at the end, I found myself trying to go down a ramp, and you're constantly switching gravity, but Shadow refused to move straight ahead. He was fighting me like he had a will of his own. This is one of those rare cases, though, where the game actually addressed its sloppy controls. It offers two interesting alternatives to running at high speeds, vehicles and chaos control. Vehicles, although a little slower than Shadow, tend to offer a decent speed with way more precise control. You have tons of options from military trucks to hover disks to the motorcycle. These seem to be a decent alternative, but they often lock them behind a doorway you need keys scattered throughout the level to unlock. When they aren't blocked that way, I would use them all the time. To be honest, it feels a little weird to be riding in a vehicle when you have rockets attached to your feet, but hey, you do you, Shadow. You do you. The other method of movement as mentioned is Chaos Control. Shadow gets two meters in the game that fill up if you're either evil or good. The evil side creating a Chaos Blast, which is a large explosion obliterating things in front of you. It's cool looking, but I didn't find myself using it that much. But Chaos Control? It's so much fun to trigger it, and Shadow propels forward at blinding speed, passing all enemies and objectives. 
It's unfortunate you couldn't control it yourself and stop on a dime. It would have helped as the game missions often require you to explore the level pretty thoroughly, which brings me to the next issue, level missions. These are definitely a mixed bag. Generally, per each stage, you have three missions, a good, a bad, and a neutral. Oftentimes, the neutral is just a traditional get-to-the-end-fast mission, while the good and bad missions consist of take these enemies out, collect a certain item, or hit switches. The take these enemies out tends to be the missions people really dislike, and for a good reason. They offer no buffer. What I mean by that is if you have to take out 45 enemies, there are exactly 45 of those enemies on the stage. This is evident even on mission one. Sometimes you pass them and then you find yourself exploring the level very thoroughly looking for this enemy type. This isn't the case for every instance of this mission type, but for the most part, the enemy count is either exactly what you need or only a handful of extra at best. The game addresses this mission issue two ways. One, generally you can almost always navigate around bad missions and do what you want. The reason for doing specific missions is to get a specific ending. You can readjust and navigate to any desired ending multiple ways, so it's not a clear cut path. You can always skip around as needed. And number two, the game implements these warp pads within the levels, so you can go back all the way to the beginning without having to turn around. It's a great idea in theory, but the only problem with these is they aren't labeled, so knowing where you're going can be tough. And you have to run over them before you can use them, so if you miss one, you have to just pick the one before it and navigate to it. Oftentimes, I ended up just going all the way back to the beginning and running through looking for things. Which takes me to the next topic. A lot of people seem to be mixed on the level design of this game, some finding levels great and some really bad to okay at best. Specific levels like the arc ones are highlighted as bad in particular. I can speak for myself when saying the biggest frustration I had was in the arc level outside on rails with the gravity switching due to my constant braking as mentioned earlier. Though I'm not sure if that's everyone's experience, it only broke one particular part of the level for me. It was very annoying though. The level seemed to be mostly laid out like a straightforward path with some limited verticality. While that may aid in speed, it definitely feels limiting. Westopolis is a great example of how linear it feels as you have to traverse this level every playthrough. If you run in a straight line, you'll reach the end at some point with minimal jumping. Oftentimes it's just dash pads that shoot you into the sky and cause you to fall, Fairly slow, I might add, though it does look epic as heck. Then the game artificially makes you explore the level by adding missions and keys, requiring you to look around carefully. They may add a secret small little path or two, but it's not much further out than slightly to the left or right of the straightforward path you're running on. In a Sonic game, moving fast is key, so any slowdown like that seems unwelcome. But I will say with the chaos abilities, you have a fast way to fly through a level. It's also the kind of game you could use your base moveset in a creative way and possibly skip areas entirely, which is the kind of stuff speedrunners yearn for. As far as the look of the game, it does have an interesting visual style with a darker tone that creates interesting environments. If you played any other games, you'd see bright and colorful worlds. Shadow is dark, but occasionally like the case with Digital Circuit, it'll give you something more traditionally sonic. The game also calls back to previous titles, and although the arc levels weren't great for the most part, the callback to Adventure 2 is really appealing. Not to mention some levels are actually really well designed like the Black Comet that has interesting puzzles to be solved while offering sections you can run through, obliterating everything in sight or just pass by. And it has a cool aesthetic. Now let's talk about that plot. People seem to really take an issue with the plot and dialogue. It's quirky, it's cheesy, some say it ruins Shadow's character. In actuality though, this really fleshed out Shadow's character even more. You have to realize every single ending is not canon in this game. You have 10 endings, but only one true ending. The rest are more what-if scenarios, which add replayability and make you want to explore the different paths in addition to seeing different levels and boss fights entirely. The actual story of this game shows how Shadow was created using the assistance of Black Doom and his blood. We're also given a little more context with Maria. Shadow having the amnesia and trying to remember who he is helps create some tension for the choice you'd make. It causes you to think, what would Shadow do? It also helps in showcasing Shadow as an edgehog. He doesn't shy away from using guns or swearing. He's really willing to go where Sonic isn't, and that's E10+. Honestly, those seem to be the biggest gripes I heard about this game with other complaints popping up inconsistently. Some people like Doom, while others don't. Lots of people like the guns and weapons mechanic, while others felt it was too different for a Sonic game. I actually was very surprised. I thought guns would be at the top of the list, but some people describe this game as less of a platformer and more of a third-person shoot-em-up, which I can totally see. The guns themselves offer a fairly large variety, and you can get human weapons or alien ones, which is kind of sick. This game ultimately had a lot of what I'd call small potato issues that just stockpiled up. 
If it ever saw a remake, I'm sure a lot of these issues could be addressed and show that there's a fun game underneath. Which is what I believe. I myself was very hyped when this game came out, having a GameCube and playing the adventure series, I was ready for another adventure. And the fact Shadow was darker and older and used guns really appealed to me. It was like Sonic was growing up with me. Keep in mind, I was like 12, so I was that plus in the rating. And sure, the dialogue may be a little silly, but hearing Shadow say he's looking for those damn Chaos Emeralds made me feel this was the game for me and understood my edgy preteen Fall Out Boy style that still lives in my heart today. Not to mention the music. Something virtually every Sonic game gets right, and Shadow is no exception. It's actually awesome how, depending on how you end the game, you get a song related to that choice. And the main theme, which is a total banger by the way, questions what choice you would make at all. And the whole making choices thing is really cool. We've definitely come a long way since this concept, but I remember loving being able to decide how to complete a level and who I'd help or go up against. Having alternate stages and boss fights was cool to explore, discover, and find the differences. And let's be honest, the graphics and CGI cutscenes are actually pretty good too. This came out in 2005 folks, I'm not talking about ray tracing, but it was atmospheric and clean looking. I lastly wanted to address the sloppy controls from my own perspective. These controls people had an issue with, I feel, make sort of sense with Shadow skating on his air shoes. It feels like it works with the way Shadow's designed. Him skating wouldn't be quite as responsive as Sonic being on foot, but that's me reading into the lore. I just find that interesting. All in all, just playing through this again, I can acknowledge its faults. It isn't a perfect game, and it's not even my favorite Sonic game in the series. But I will say, at the end of the day, I was having fun replaying this game, and others online, though acknowledging the game's faults, had similar sentiments. I can only attribute it to this game, though lacking polish, has something that makes it memorable and fun to play. Whether that be the atmosphere, the slightly different style of gameplay versus a traditional Sonic game, the swearing, who knows? Not to mention it has a fun multiplayer mode and fun little secret for you, you can even control the NPC that follows you by plugging in another controller, creating a pseudo co-op experience, which is a pretty wild secret. I'd say Shadow the Hedgehog isn't a great game, but it's a good game, and if you're on the fence about playing it, you shouldn't be. Go give it a shot. Well that's all I have for you. Be sure to drop a like on this to demand that YouTube overlords push out this damn video and my other damn content. And check out my other damn content while you're at it. Until next time, have a good one. Jiggy